Hello everyone, I have um, created this small video just to illustrate the concepts uh, behind discrete choice models and also how would one go about estimating um, McFadden's logit, which is the discrete choice model um, in SPSS. If you recall from our last lecture that uh, we had uh, um, the uh, a model presented there and uh, this is the the model in uh, um, estimated and in its data and if you look at the the observations there are 885 observations coming from um, 295 individuals um, almost everyone had three choices of owning European Japanese or American vehicle and uh, we estimated the model and uh, if you could recall the concepts from uh, the last two weeks, especially those who attended the lecture last week, that uh, the number of dealerships um, is not the same um, for each uh, alternative. That is, the number of dealerships within a certain reasonable vicinity of each decision maker, the buyer, uh, differs for each national brand, European, Japanese, and uh, American and this coefficient is therefore reported here um, and this is a alternative specific coefficient whereas the gender uh, of the buyer in this case we have used the variable men male and their income are um, variables which are characteristics of the decision maker and therefore they enter as um, an interaction between the the choices so we have men and income interacted with the uh, choice Japan and men and income again interacted with the choice Europe and having the American as the base alternative right so um, we estimated the model we got these coefficients these are the standard errors these are the Z statistics these are the probability um, the, the significance levels you could see that this is um, significant at 95 percent confidence intervals cars the odds ratio if you could see here the same model you saw here coefficient and now odds ratio you could see that uh, the odds of choosing um, um, a Japanese car for men is lower um, and odds of um, choosing a European vehicle for men is much higher 76 percent higher for men um, and um, almost 42 percent less likely to buy Japanese men are 42 percent less likely to buy Japanese cars so good we got this point so I'm gonna now shift to SPSS and um, and uh, show you how to do this in SPSS now here we are looking at the um, data set in SPSS if you look at the uh, first column it's the ID column so individual one is repeated thrice it's a male and uh, an average uh, the person's household uh, personal income is forty six thousand seven hundred dollars and the three choices this person faced were American Europe Japanese and European vehicles this is the variable variable which is a dummy variable for the size of the car um, that this person is looking for um, and then the choice that this person uh, actually ended up buying is here uh, which is a European vehicle and zero for choices alternatives he did not choose um, the number of dealerships for American cars were 18 within this person's immediate catchment Japanese dealerships were 8 and European were 5 and this person bought a European car despite the fact that there were fewer dealerships there I created a dummy variable Japan which uh, basically is one if the um, alternative is Japan a Japanese vehicle zero otherwise then I created another dummy variable called Europe uh, you would notice that this is zero for American and Japan and one for uh, Europe and this happens again and again and th the reason you create these dummy variables because th if if American made a make is used as the base case then you need these j two dummy variables to serve as your constants in the model now uh, if you go back to your uh, PowerPoint slide you would see that under Japan and Europe you have three coefficients um, male income and a constant and that constant comes from the fact that the 
um, Stata automatically added a dummy variable for Japan and Europe. In SPSS we have to create these two dummy variables. Then I interacted the income uh, variable, uh, sorry, the gender variable male um, with Japan. So I multiplied if it's male, one, uh, which if you uh, remove the um, label you'd see male is one and female is zero, right? So if I multiply male with Japan, one times zero, I get zero. So here's a zero. If male, one times Japan, one, and it's one. So it's an interaction between the variable male and the variable Japan. And this gives us the interaction effect. And this is the male Japan and male Europe right here. One, if the respondent was male and the choice was Europe, and you could see it just repeats itself. Simple multiplication um, and this creates this new variable. Similarly, I took the income variable 46,700 and interacted with uh, the Japan variable which is, is Japan and it would become the income if the choice is Japanese which is 46,700 and zero otherwise. Same with Europe, income Europe if the choice is Europe right here and um, if um, if the choice is Europe and the income is whatever it is, multiply 46,700, 46.7 times this variable and you get 46.7 and zero otherwise. Why we do it? Because now we are in entering income as an explanatory variable that it could only enter for n minus 1 alternatives and since American made is the base case in our example, these two are, um, dummy these variables are created to account for the fact that we are controlling for the impact of income on Japanese and European cars while we compare them against the base which is the American vehicle. And the last variable that I created is called T and this in Cox regression which is the method we will use in SPSS to estimate a discrete choice model it's, it's basically created as you could see in equation 8 dash 42 in your in your in your um, textbook um, to contr um, to account for the internal um, architecture of this command Cox regression command in SPSS um, so it's basically t is equal to 2 minus the choice variable which is in our case this um, so I created this and the syntax for this is available at um, let's see uh, I'm going to pause this video for one second. So basically what I did is I have um, taken the um, I said compute t is equal to 2 minus choice and it executed it and it gave me the t variable right here and then in Cox regression I simply um, went here analyze and I said um, survival and I said Cox regression and in the time variable I added T in the status variable I said choice and if you look at choice I define the event as single value 1 that's the choice variable 1 being the choice 0 otherwise and then I simply added those variables from here into as covariates and I pressed OK and when I do that, I guess the I got the following output, which is right here. Um, SPSS produces unnecessarily detailed output, but if you look at it here, um, variables in the equation, you would find the following information. You see, th this is the exact model that I presented in the car, uh, in the class, where dealership, um, the number of dealerships coefficient is 0 0.068, and the exponential is 1.07 the two constants uh, controlling for Japanese brand and European brands are here and they are uh, their exponentials are here so in in uh, in my previous slides um, in the class notes if you look at the slide that shows coefficients you see these and if you look at the relative risk ratio these are here and the again male Japan you have the same uh, 0.586 the males are 42 percent less likely to buy a Japanese car and males are 76 percent or 77 percent more likely to buy uh, a European car so this concludes my um,
presentation and now the challenge is to figure out how to get this video to you guys so happy modeling bye now